Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. It is Tuesday, which means it's time for Inktober 52, although it's the official, like, Inktober month, so, um, I haven't been getting an email with a prompt, so I've just been doing, uh, whatever the regular Inktober prompt is. For anybody who doesn't know what Inktober is, it was originally a month-long inking challenge, one drawing per day inked for the entire month of October. So ink plus October equals Inktober. And then they created, it got popular, then they created Inktober 52, which is what I've been doing this year, which is 52 weeks of drawings. So one drawing per week throughout the entire year. But since we're in October now, I think that's what they're figuring that, uh, I mean, I can only assume that's why I haven't been getting any Inktober 52 prompts because regular Inktober is on. And so, yeah, today's prompt for regular old Inktober is fortune. So, um, on top of the prompt, I also use my own theme, which is to draw something related to a griffin, either draw a griffin or have a griffin in the scene or whatever. So, I'm going to be drawing a crane griffin, a Japanese crane. Uh, I can't remember what they what they're called in Japan. Tsuru is just the word for just crane by itself, so maybe that's what they're called, but they're very the very iconic black and white with a red on on the very top. I'm looking at a, a reference image from Wikipedia. So if you go to Wikipedia, like search uh, Japanese crane on Wikipedia and you can find a, the image I'm using. Um, and then for the back half of the griffin, so the griffin is, in my mind, a bird on the front and a mammal on the back. So the mammal on the back is, I'm going to use the Japanese deer for the back to make this griffin. Okay, so the tools I'm going to use, I have this kit that I've been using all year. It's, most of the contents came from the Inktober retreat that I did last year. I think it might be starting this year, so hopefully... Everyone there is uh, having a great time and in getting their Inktober drawings done. Last year, that Inktober retreat, that's the first time I ever got all 31 drawings done for an Inktober. And I've been doing Inktober since 2016, I think. So anyway, the stuff I have in here is this creative, uh, creative starter set by Zebra. So it has five of their mild liner markers with the chisel tip and the bullet tip. So it's double ended. And then five of their fine liner markers, um, or pens, whatever you want to call them. And as you can see by the caps, they're different colors, and it's just one black in here. Let's see, next thing. This is my sketchbook that I've been using, the official Inktober Moleskin Collab sketchbooks. You can see it says Moleskin down there. So this is the sketchbook I'm using. And then the last couple things that were from the retreat, uh, two brush pens, both from Zebra. They have the same medium size brush tip on one end. And then the red pen also has a small, a, font, a fine tip brush on this end. Okay, and then there's a few more things in here that I just added myself which include Palomino Blackwing pencil, my favorite one, my favorite uh, body design based on the Stratocaster guitar, Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> and I mean, I just, these are my favorite colors. So if this was silver instead of gold, this would be absolutely my favorite. Red, black, and silver is my favorite colors. I like gold too now though. When I was a kid, I hated gold for some reason. It, whenever my grandma would give me jewelry that was gold color and I, eh, I want silver. But now I'm like, mm, it's shiny. I like it if it's shiny. <laughs> okay, it's so another thing. This uh, two step, it's called the long point uh, sharpener by Kum, K-U-M, Kum. And it has two steps to get a nice long point on your pencils. And then finally, this is a very recent addition, like last week or the week before, I added a, like a big eraser. There's a razor on here, but to be honest, the, this eraser is not the best. <laughs> so I added one, it's bigger so it can erase more faster and it's just a better eraser. This is the, the Pentel high polymer eraser. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how, how well it worked. 
So <laughs> kudos to Pento. Anything else in here? Nope. Okay, let's fold this up. Yeah, the first thing that came to mind for this prompt, fortune. The prompt itself is fortune. Um, I was like, pirate treasure. <laughs> I was like, I don't really feel like drawing something so cartoony as like a griffin pirate. Um, I mean, I could. I've drawn stuff like that before. There's nothing wrong with it or anything. But I just didn't feel like I've been more in the mood to draw more naturalistic stuff. I guess more in the mood to practice different uh, griffins. Like, what would they look like? Okay. Let's get in here. This is last week's. It was Path. Whee! Okay. It's nice when you're in the middle of a uh, register of pages where it's got the uh, binding here. I don't know if you can see it that well. It's not focusing. Focus, please. Okay, you can sort of see. It's got the binding here showing through because it's a sewn. It's got. It looks like it's got both sewing and a bit of glue, but maybe not any glue. Maybe it's just sewing. Anyway, it's nice when you're in the middle of a register. A register is eight sheets of paper. Um, no, a register is four sheets of paper. It's folded in half and then becomes eight pages. Yes. <laughs> so it's always nice because it always lays the flattest when you're in the middle. So that's not my favorite <laughs> whenever I get in this middle one, middle part. Okay. Let me rearrange this so that I can work a bit more centered. Ah, here we go. There we go. Ah. Oh, Exy is here. Hello. How are you? Thank you for joining me. It's great to see you as usual. Did you have a great weekend? I hope you did. Okay, so. Let me zoom in on my image. This uh, reference of, why is it, it's either gigantic or too small. <laughs> All right, well, I'll keep it the way it was. Uh, this reference image of the two, there's two cranes flying. This Wikipedia image of the Japanese cranes and the one more in the front has the beautiful, elegant, the feet are like me, like it's just a, like a ballerina or something. Oh, thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Says Exy. Exy the artist subscribed to tier one. They subscribed for 11 months. Currently on 11 months. Drake! Woo! Almost a year, says Exy. Yay! <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Exy says, I'm all fine. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. You're welcome. How are you? I'm good too. Today is the best because it's been rainy almost all day. It's been cold and cloudy and so I am like in the best mood ever. Ooh, that reminds me. Usually I just have my mineral water to drink, but it's so cold that I'm like, mmm, I made myself some tea, so. Mmm, <laughs> take a sip of it. Yum, 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 yum. It was, uh, I can't remember exactly all the stuff in it, but it was like a, a blend tea, black tea with some various different like herbs and stuff. And it's oh, so good. I think it even had little, like, little pieces of mango or something like there was some little dried fruit in it too. This is the last, this is the last of this one. But I've got, I've got so much tea, so I'm not sad about it being the last. <laughs> okay, let's get this in. So interestingly, the head is like this, and then the the neck arches down, but then the the where the neck meets the body actually goes up higher than the head. Probably because it's starting to become the shoulder muscles, which then come out and become the wings. And this is definitely going to go off the page. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to see what angle the wings are about, about like this. This kind of angle. And then the other wing mostly follows this angle, but it's actually a little bit like a little bit up. 
compared. Okay, and so if this is the main head, the beak is about as long as the head. Okay, so now I can use that as a, a length reference. So I'm gonna, so I'm taking my pencil and I'm gonna put my thumb on it here and then that way I can, so I'll hold it up and I can see how long. So from the tip of the beak to where the neck meets this bottom or the back one is about this long. So from the tip of my pencil to where my thumbnail is. And now I can use that to see uh, how far, okay, so for this point, this length, um, there's a straight, but then the wing starts to curve. So it should be, it should include a curve here. Okay, so let's do it again on the other wing. So I'm trying to see which features will not be on the page because it'll be cut off by the edge. Well, which stuff should definitely be included? Okay, so neither of these wings should have that that little small feather that is point, sticking up. And it happens on most birds, I've noticed. They have like this little feather and then they have those real big long ones but you don't even see it on here because they're both cut off by the, by the, um, 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 okay, I think I actually put this a little too close, but uh, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm not trying to do photorealistic. Okay. Okay. So it's neck and beautiful, beautiful, elegant. I don't know why these birds came to represent good fortune, but they're very beautiful, so maybe that's why. They're just like the most... There's such... Uh, I don't know. There's no other word. They're just beautiful. <laughs> they're just beautiful! Okay. Now, let's do another measurement. From the tip of the beak to where the neck meets the body, how does that compare to the rest of the body? Okay, so yeah, it should be the same. This should go all the way down to here. Okay, and then, I don't know why today I feel like, maybe because it is so beautiful a bird, I'm like, why do I feel like doing it this way today? Usually I just sort of eyeball it, but it's just such, such a nice looking bird. Okay. <laughs> so, so if it's from here to here, then from here to here, about here is where the white feathers become black feathers on the wings. And then it should go up here. Now here I am going to fudge it just a little bit. I'm not going to draw each individual feather. <laughs> I don't want to take that long. Zinktober for me is practice time, not perfection time, so. Okay. Now, so I won't draw the black feathers yet because now it comes to the point where it needs to become the deer. So I shall switch to my deer, which is also on Wikipedia. This reference image is so nice that Wikipedia had some good reference images of these animals. I also found something interesting. I'm going to take another sip of tea. Something interesting about this Japanese deer. When I was just researching it on Google, one website was like, calling it a Sika deer is redundant. It's, it's like saying chai tea because chai means tea. So saying chai tea means tea tea. Sika comes from the Japanese word shika which is deer. So to say Sika deer is like saying deer deer. <laughs> so I did not know that. So that's interesting. So I'm just going to call it Japanese deer because that's what the, the website suggested. And I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Just call it Japanese deer instead of deer deer. Okay. So if the legs of the crane are about here, then this should be about where the deer's legs are. And it comes up and then like goes down like this and then like a very thin, but the ankle part is thick, very thin, small, delicate legs. 
And I can't really see the hooves that well, so I'm gonna just, uh, I'm pretty sure they have cloven hooves. And they definitely have two little things on the back too. So maybe this is a little bit, I'm making it up a bit, <laughs> the hooves, but and there's that thing that's on the back. And they've got this nice longish hair, fur, whatever you want to call it, on the upper part of the legs. And then they've got the nice little deer tail like this, so I'm going to have it flopping in the wind. <laughs> Let's see, it comes about to there, so it's not too long. Okay, now I'm going to go to... So I'm going back to the crane reference, so I can see where the legs are coming out. So it's actually twisted a little bit, so the other leg should be visible like this too. So you're seeing it from underneath, so the other, the back leg won't be visible up here, instead it's visible down here. But I'll do the same thing what I'm seeing with the, oh, I want to change this foot. I think that will look nicer if I have the foot curving backwards a little bit. But I'm going to have it, the feet crossed a little bit, just like the crane is in this reference picture. Oh, yes, that's much better. That's much better. And then we'll just have this like that. Okay, now we got to add the front legs, which is actually the back legs of the crane. So I just got to use my imagination. Um... Would they also be flopping back? I think that they would probably be like this, but hmm. It's always a tough thing with griffins. Like, should the front legs be like this, or should they be long and back, like, for aerodynamic? Or should they be tucked up more like uh, landing, <laughs> landing gear on a plane? Oh, what the heck, I'll just draw them, I'll draw them the way they are in this reference photo and then I'll just see what I think. See if it looks weird to have them, have both the front and the back legs streaming back. <laughs> Exy, you always have the solution. I love it, I do it. Exy says, like Superman, one forward, one backwards. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that idea. Yes, I shall do that. Solves the problem. And I got this one already back, so I'll just draw the other one forward. Excellent. Okay, I gotta zoom in on this picture. I cannot see. Ah, oh, so much better. The hand just, well, hand. <laughs> in the reference, it's a foot, but I guess it's a hand for this griffin. Just becomes like this sort of almost triangle shape. But even this has got this elegant, like, uh, like an up and like, oh, kind of like my, like my hand like this, Ooh, like this, so nice. Yes, thank you, Xy. <laughs> Solve my problem. It's such a simple solution. I did not even consider it. <laughs> So the elbow is clearly here. Well, elbow for the griffin. For the crane, it's its... I think that's its ankle. Or is it the knee? Anyway, it's hard because the anatomy isn't one-to-one uh, -one with a human anatomy, so it's <laughs> so hard to say. But we shall put this... I'm trying to make it the same length. And we'll just have it. And I'll try to make it elegant as well. Or maybe I should have it like this. Though I can't tell exactly like if they have webbed feet or what, but Oh! Wolf! Hello! Hello, hello! Wolf is here! No 
the wolf says, hey, I thought it was a crane, but crane x what? Ah, you use it, little happy one. Hello, hello. <laughs> you use it, Mozzie. I'm so happy to see it. <laughs> Yay. Wolf used the ranger emoji that we finished last week. He's so happy. <laughs> X uses it. Ah, I'm so happy to see it. It's being used. It's in action. I mean, I was happy to see it on Discord too, but this is the other place where Rangers lives now, so. <laughs> oh, 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 and, and uh, to answer Wolf's question, it is a uh, Japanese deer. Japanese deer. Shika, shika. So, and both of these uh, animals, I'm just using a reference image uh, via, what am I trying to say? Um, Wikipedia. They're on Wikipedia, so. Oh, I actually like this. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. That's an interesting. It's like, almost like a swimming. Like it's, like, I don't know, like it's running. It's as it's flying. <laughs> Oh, Wolf, I didn't get to ask you. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Did you have a good weekend? It's very interesting to have the long. Everything is long, but I chose deer, so it's actually not that long on the back. <laughs> okay, now I can draw the, uh, the black feathers because they come off the back. So... Let's see, because so I needed the line of the back in order to know where to stop the feathers. Okay, so let's see. Oh, it gets bigger. Whoops. Yes, there we go. These ones I am also fudging. I am not counting, not counting how many <laughs> feathers. It's interesting here, though, there's like black and white layered on top of each other feathers and, and then it becomes white for the very tips okay so let's do this other wing it has not gotten much attention oh good wolf says doing well missed a few streams yeah i missed you <laughs> didn't seem that busy but i guess i was yeah it's so surprising you've talked about uh my my scheduling techniques and stuff or whatever and that's like it's always surprising to me when i schedule stuff i'm like oh i thought i could do more <laughs> but the the work is always takes more than what it seems okay so the other the other wing the bottom of the wing sort of matches but since it's going away with perspective, it's actually getting a little a little thinner compared to this one. So I'm just gonna do a straight line like this. And then I shall add little woo-woos to be to be the feathers. <laughs> Let's see, about the same spot for the white feathers. Because these bottom ones are black. And then the same thing here. Where there's like some overlapping and then it becomes all white from this point. I was measuring so precisely and now I'm like, whatever. <laughs> not measuring precisely at all anymore. Okay, zooming in to get the facial features. Eye goes about here. And the beak comes all the way up on the head like this, and we're getting up from down below view, so this is a slightly different, hopefully I can get that effect in this drawing. Okay, and then it's got this uh, white patch on the head that comes right up to the eye. And it goes and wraps around the back of the head. And then you can barely see it in this angle, but there's the red patch on the top too. That icon iconic, what makes it look like the Japanese 
crane. Hmm, I see. I made the neck a bit short, but whatever. This one has a short neck, that's all. <laughs> this is genetics. This one is genetically short neck. <laughs> okay. Man, looks good. Now, I just wanted to add some lines to indicate where the hooves and the fur are different. It's just right there. Not much. And the tail is white, and then there's a little bit of black. And then this part on the deer is red. But I'm just going to leave it white because this part of the crane is white, so it's just going to be all white. And just with like black and then another white tail. So then I'm doing black and white inking anyway. Hmm, I should have drawn this a little farther down. I don't know why I drew it so far up. I guess because I was imagining it being up in the sky, so maybe that's okay. Gives it a feeling of being way the heck up there. Yay! Perfect timing to start inking. Wolf, do you mind me asking if, uh, or, uh, not if, what were you busy with? I mean, if you don't want to say it, you don't have to say anything. So, if it was personal or just not something to talk about on stream. I'm just curious. Okay, let's use... Actually, I want to use the fine liner to ink the main, or the initial, we'll call it the initial lines. Because since it's like this pure white, bird having as thin of inked lines as possible for those areas I think would be better so and then I will add more ink for uh, darker areas and details and stuff like that man I shouldn't have rubbed my eye I forget that I have a contact in there sometimes I have a contact only in my right eye but it was suddenly itchy and I rubbed it and then my contact was like and it, like I had to rub it a little bit more to get it to be on straight again. <laughs> okay, it's better. I can see. It's better now. I do prefer having a contact over having glasses. But it still comes with its own issues. <laughs> oh well. Just let's deal with it. Nothing's perfect. And at least my vision is good enough that worst case scenario and I just like get really tired of it, then I can just take a break and I don't have to wear, not even for driving or anything, I can just uh, go without. It's just that it helps me with not getting headaches and stuff. And stuff is clearer. Like... I was playing Animal Crossing the other day and I was like, wow, I didn't realize there was texture on Katrina's blanket that goes on her, like, altar. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could not see that texture before. Just little stuff like that makes me appreciate it. Yeah, next year, I just want a, well... I say next year, but whenever I fill this one up, I want like a ring bound. Like, I think I'll just use my regular favorite sketchbook for Inktober. Because dealing with this, uh, the gutter in between the two pages is such a pain. <laughs> I'm going to admit it. Because either I've got to draw a smaller drawing and only fit it and try to fit it in this long weird format or if I draw it like this then it's more a format to my liking but then there's a thing in the middle that I have to deal with to try to ink over it or whatever I guess it's good practice to do something unusual then I know how to deal with it in the future 
If for some reason I absolutely must use such a sketchbook, there are elegant legs coming together. And the back and the tail. Trying to make sure where where I have inked and where I've only because this this ink is actually so light. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell whether I inked or whether that's just a really heavy bit of graphite. Hard to it's hard to ink this because my hand goes off my hand goes off the page we're making such good time I think I'll have time to erase so that's nice because I've got a lot of graphite here with the arms and the wings are different because they just went woo I just did a single line and it was done. Okay, now this one. Little U's to represent the edges of the feathers. There, okay, good. Let's erase. Something I just thought of that would be really fun to do, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, this is looking perfect. Yay. This, this crane griffin is coming to bring you all good fortune. That's why I picked it, because the, the prompt was fortune, and cranes represent good fortune and longevity. I had a thought that I can't really do it with this, with this gutter issue and all this other stuff with this sketchbook, but if I were to use, like, my favorite standard go-to sketchbook that I always have one, and I do my way and work in it. Um, and I used the blue colored pencil for the sketching. Then I could make like a weekly coloring page if people wanted to color it. Because if I use the blue colored pencil, I have a blue mechanical pencil that has colored pencil lead in it. Well, I guess the, pe well, the pencil is blue, but the lead is also blue. <laughs> Anyway, it's really, really easy to extract the lines that way from a scanned image with black ink on it. So that could be, that could be fun. And I could like, uh, post it on Discord and Patreon as a, like a digital reward for everybody. I think that would be fun. Maybe I'll do that once I fill this sketchbook up. I just had that thought randomly just now. <laughs> Getting all the eraser gunk off. And where's my brush? I'm gonna brush it into the trash can as usual. Oh, and some came off on the desk, too. Okay, let's see. And trash can up here. Swipe this into the trash can, too. A big reason why I don't like my, uh, these little trashy dust 
things to go on the floor and I would try to get them in the trash can is because I like to walk barefoot in my studio. <laughs> so I don't like to walk on eraser shavings and stuff. So that's a big reason why. Instead of just swiping it on the floor. I used to do that when I was a kid and then that would happen and I'd walk on it and I'd have little razor shavings on my feet. I'm like, oh, that's when I stopped. Okay, we got the nice basic lines for everything. So now let's start adding more ink. <clears throat> so first I shall look for anything that just I want it to be completely black. So like these black feathers and that little patch of black on the tail, the hooves and stuff. So... I'm going to start with the feathers though, because they're the biggest area. So I prefer that they got done. If it, if for some reason it takes so long that I use up all my time, I would prefer these uh, feathers on the wings to be that which is uh, completely colored in. If I have to skip the patch uh, right at the end of the tail or whatever, that's, that's easier in my mind <laughs> to deal with. To accept, yes, that's the word. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Since these pens aren't too juicy, it takes a while. Just a couple more months, and then I will use... I'm going to put together my ideal Inktober kit. And put all my favorite stuff in it. Uh, and I guess if this stuff is this stuff that I'm using is still all in pretty good condition like I think this will because I've hardly ever used these well, I mean I've used them here and there but not like these brush pens but I'll just put it on my lucky dip spreadsheet so that they have a chance of getting used still Brush pens are really nice for stuff like this because you can hold it so that the tip can get into the little fine, like the little corners and stuff, but then you can push down hard and fill in a bunch of ink at once if it's a big area. I wish it wasn't so dry though. This pen is so dry. It's like as long as I swipe very, very slowly. <laughs> oh, so slow. But it works better if I do it slowly. If you hold it straight, these these pens are nice though because the tips are some brush pens are actually brush so that it's really weaky. <laughs> so like if you try to use it on the tip, it just goes wink and it just smushes down. But this is nice and firm, so you can get a really teeny tiny line out of it if you want. But you just hold it straight or sort of straight up and down, and then to get. Uh, a big stroke you can just push hard on it or you can turn it more on its side or whatever so there is a nice amount of control I just wish it wasn't so dry or, or it's like not that it's dry it's like the ink flow is very slow I think that's what it is considering that we a few weeks ago on stream tried the brand new straight out of the package brush and it's had the same issues so maybe that's what it is ink flows very slow This is very relaxing actually since I have no choice but to do this nice and slow it's like hmm 
right, meditative. Just watching each stroke go onto the page and fill up a little bit more. It is also a little, uh, it's a little physically taxing. <laughs> My arm is getting a bit tired doing this. <clears throat> I just got my wee fit goal just sitting here and <laughs> drawing. <laughs> it's funny. You heard that little uh, cheer that went up. That was my Wii, Wii U fit meter, which I've shown before. And yes, still wear it. Still wearing it. I have not unlocked all of the um, the costumes and stuff on the game from, what is it called? You can upload, you upload your altitude and your steps and then you get costumes of doing these virtual paths around the world and stuff. So, like, I'm at least going to keep playing it until I get those because I've been playing it since it first came out on the Wii. So I have, like, I think it came out in 2000. Oh, I have no idea, actually. I cannot say with confidence. It's like 2007, I think. Or 2011? Anyway, I've been using it since then. So I like seeing, especially when the Wii U version came out and the Wii U had the little photo uh, ability, so a little camera so you could take your photo. And so I have like, I don't know how many years of photos. So we'll see uh, how my face has changed as I've gotten in shape. I was a bit disappointed they didn't bring it to the Switch, the, the Wii Fit. But I love Ring Fit Adventure, which is, I think, the spiritual successor to Wii Fit. And I love Ring Fit. I do Ring Fit every week. It's very fun. I love that it has a story, and it's really funny. I've finished the main story, and now I'm doing, like, the, sort of like the Game Plus thing, you know. And it's really nice because the original story was kind of not too serious, but it was like an adventure. And this one is more like you're doing all the same stuff over again, but it's slightly different. And it's sort of almost like everything is all cool now. So <laughs> like there's no, no danger. You're just all working together to get in shape or something. So it's, it's more, it's not such a dramatic. Yeah, it's a little less dramatic. And there's a lot more humor. There's humor in it all the way through, though. Ah! I did it. I got the wings. <laughs> I got all those lovely, like, the contrast on these birds is just incredible. It's so amazing because I don't even see, like, m there. maybe there's a little bit of gray feathers, but it's really like, black and white. Strong, strong patterns. Okay, so next ones. This is also feathers. But they're so small, you can't see the details. The feathers on the face and the neck. Good. Now the eye is also very, very dark, but it does have a pretty good shine in it. So there. Yay. I did it the way I wanted to. I'll hold it up close so you can see that I 
I was able to get that little, little shine in there. Show that the eye is different from the feathers around it. Come on, camera. Come on and focus. Let's do this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Exy says 15 minutes to go. <laughs> thank you for letting me know. That's a good because uh, I think I can at least get the main black patches, but uh, the legs are also black, although they're kind of black and white here. Yeah, I wasn't even looking at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Sarah says, no, I missed so much. <laughs> Don't worry. There's still more. There's still more I got to do. Ah, now you're watching it. You also shall receive good fortune from this uh, crane griffin. <laughs> the prompt is fortune, so I picked the crane because the cranes represent fortune, so. Good fortune to you, flying to you to bring you to good fortune. Okay, I'm adding this black patch of fur on the tail of the deer. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm waving. You're not even saying it to me. <laughs> I'm waving. <laughs> Actually, it's so happy. Because I also uploaded the, like, I did not know about this stuff. Like, you guys know, because I'm telling you all the time that I, like, know nothing about streaming. Exy <laughs> just used, Exy says, hey, Sarah, and used the Hello Ranger uh, emote, along with the Hi emote, which was one of these ones I did not know. Twitch offers you these free ones that you can upload to, for people for free to use as long as they follow you. <laughs> so happy to see that. With a little hi coming out of Ranger's mouth. Cute. Man, I'm freaking out and not drawing. Okay. Does the fortune come with a cookie? Yes. You can imagine that on this crane griffin's back is a little bundle. <laughs> a little bundle of cookies for you. <laughs> That's a good question. I was like looking for uh, fortune emote. Or, oh, fortune emoji. Emoji. It was emoji because I was trying to look for something to put in my description uh, for when I went live and the notification that goes out to everybody. And it was all either crystal ball, crystal ball or the fortune cookie. And I was like, no, that's not really, neither of those are what I'm trying to go for. <laughs> it's funny that you bring a cookie, cookie idea up. Because I was just thinking about that. Okay, I'm trying to ink, especially with this leg. I'm going to try to leave. <coughs> oh, goodness. All of a sudden, I needed a cough. Let me get a sip of tea. Ah, oh, if, if only I had thought of it earlier. That's what this hand could be carrying is a basket of cookies. They've already done all of this other stuff, so I can't really draw it. That's a good idea. Sarah says, a basket of cookies. So just imagine it's on the back. You just can't see it. It's a... Perfectly balanced on the back. <laughs> so bringing cookies to you. Okay, so what I was saying was I'm going to try to leave a little bit of space so that the arm doesn't get lost next to these black feathers because the arm is also pretty much black too. Mm, Ten minutes to go, exactly. And same thing with these fingers. I don't want to lose the hand. Or at least, hmm, I guess it's okay. Okay, that's good. I think that's good. Here, I'll, I'll hold it up close because you can't really tell so far away. Come on, camera. There we go. There we go. So I just left a little bit of white. Just so that it would be able to differentiate what's what. <clears throat> oh, thank you, camera. The camera focused on its own. I love it when that happens. What is this sad face? <laughs> Bible thump. <laughs> what is this? 
What is this sad face? Why is it sad? Okay, now I'm going to... Oh, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to look at the deer, I think. So I just want to bring a little bit more black into the fur. Just right here. I think that's good. Okay. What do I want to... Oh. <laughs> I'm getting, I just, I'm just moving ahead at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Sarah says, sadly, you can't add the cookie basket because it came too late to blurt it out sooner. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. What kind of cookie do you want? What kind? You want, you want like a fortune cookie or you want like a chocolate chip cookie? Chocolate chip cookie is my favorite cookie. If you would tell me what kind of cookie you want, everybody can tell me what kind of cookie you want. And I'll draw them in the background. Chucky Chip! Okay. I just go freehand it too. Yes! This is so fun. <laughs> yes! Here I said I didn't want to do anything ridiculous. Like a pirate griffin. And now I'm drawing cookies just flying in the air. Okay, if anybody has any other cookie, I will add it. Here we're going to do one that's on its side. You can see the chocolate chips sticking out the top. <laughs> Chucky chip is my fave too. The good, the chocolate chip good fortune. Ah, this is, it's so fun to live stream with you guys. This is ridiculous. I never would have thought of such a thing. <laughs> chocolate chip good fortune. <laughs> good fortune. Griffin. <laughs> I'm trying to draw them at different angles and stuff. Like, you know, sometimes the chocolate chips are all consolidated on one side of the cookie. That's what this one is. Okay. Um, I do want to add a little bit more ink to Because now that I've got these cookies here, the griffin does not... Uh, Stand up to them because I use this thick pen. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit more. I wanted to do this anyway. Add a bit more ink to make the lines for the griffin a bit more robust. But I wanted to save, I want the lines to be nice and light in these areas where the feathers are white. And the tail is white too, so this tip is white, so I'm gonna leave that. <coughs> Death by falling cookie, bringing you good fortune. It's good fortune if you see the cookie for the good fortune cookie crane, Griffin, and you go outside, you run outside, you open your mouth, look up, and it's like a snowflake, but you have to get the cookie in your mouth. <laughs> If you catch the cookie in your mouth and don't die from the impact or from choking, <laughs> then, then it was a good luck for you. <laughs> We've got an excellent mythology going here with this. <laughs> yeah, you have to catch it every once in a while. Yeah, you have to make a wish. You see it coming, you're like, oh, make a wish, and then you open your mouth. Ah, and then pew, bum. awesome this is awesome okay I'm also adding a little the lines <clears throat> I'm doing my best to make the lines thicker along the bottom as well because then that can help indicate sort of a heaviness like just visually indicates the gravity on the bottom side and it, I didn't really do it here because I accidentally did this part too thick but this is all about practice for me. So let's do some more cookies with a thinner pen and then that way they won't stand out too much. And let's do some just coming out from behind. Oh, this is the bottom of this cookie. So you're not gonna see, it's not gonna see as many chocolate chips. Here's one. 
And this one has just like little chocolate chips. <laughs> it's awesome. Let's make a bigger one. Like it's coming closer. Like a big one. Yeah. This one has fallen for longer. So it's bigger. This is so funny. Let's have one on top of another one too. Let's have some overlap with the cookies. Over here, since there's a big one over here, let's make it small one over here. Just a couple small ones. <laughs> this is awesome. The cookie bringing good fortune, Griffin. <clears throat> This one's upside down. This cookie is from the side and it's upside down too. It's falling face down. Let's do another bigger one. Yep, this stream did not turn out how I expected at all. <laughs> the contents of my drawing. Okay, and just clean up a couple little smudges I noticed. I'm <clears throat> just probably from my hand smearing a graphite around. Only have a couple minutes left. But I think we're actually doing great. This pretty much looks done, actually. Maybe the only thing I'll add is a little bit of hatching. Yeah, let's just do a little bit of hatching in these final minutes. So I already did a little bit on this cookie that's real close. We could do some here. A little bit under the tail. So there's like a nice bit of shadow right here with a wing and cast a shadow on the body. So use the hatching to indicate that on here. <laughs> Yay, so many cookies, Sarah. Yay! It's getting that time of year too. Cookie making time. Mmm, that's my favorite time. I love cookies. I'll do hatching on the beak and on this part that's supposed to be red, but I'm just doing black ink today so I just put hatching on there to indicate color rather than shadow. <clears throat> Ok, 
Okay, boom. We are over time, so let's call this good. What is it? Inktober 52. And the, uh, I was going to say the clue, as if this is a puzzle. Well, it sort of is a puzzle. Uh, the prompt is fortune. And then, kyo wa, today is the 10th of October 2023. Yay! <laughs> Oh, how's the say? Oh, Sarah's stepping away for a second. Oh, you're welcome. It actually says, thank you for the stream. See you next time. Yay. You are welcome. Thank you for watching. Here is the close-up of this uh, weird cookie bringing fortune Griffin. <laughs> Yay. I, I did not read all of Sarah's message. Oh, <laughs> Sarah, I have to step away a minute, get to Amazon stuff, and stop Taika from barking. He barks because he's scared. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. All right. There it is, our fortune griffin. Yay. And it's a good day for fortune, too, because I feel very lucky because it's rainy. I said this at the beginning, but I'm having a great... Having a great day. This is a great stream. So awesome to see everybody in the chat. So, uh, yeah, that's it for today. I shall be back tomorrow for a lucky dip. Uh, I was very confused. I almost got ready for a lucky dip today, and I was like, wait a minute, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> so hopefully I'll see everybody again tomorrow. Uh, same time as always. Either way, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.